Hello. I can't believe this is Robbie from Southern California that we're already in the middle of January. So I am, let's see if I hold my word to it, going to try to make a quick mid-month garden tour. Look at this. I'm in my front yard. Look, I still have tomatoes. Look at that. I've got some pretty big ones that have been coming up in the winter too, and I've been quite surprised. But these are doing really good. I, what I've been doing right now is I've been trying to clean up my garden and get ready for spring, which I'll start planting in the next month or two, depending on the weather, and trying to figure out where I want to put what. Here, I was trimming and put some tomatoes in here, and these are cuttings. And I expected a week ago that most would die and I'd have one and all four are still alive, so they may take off. And they're pretty big growing tomatoes. The plant gets so big. So we'll see what happens. And this is a broccolini. And look at this. I believe that is a dinosaur kale baby. So we'll see what happens with that. I've got my blueberries which went in dormant. Those are the regular onions and they're doing really good on the chair. I love my chairs. In fact, I've got this old broken metal chair that I've got plans for. I'm going to get a tub on this. See, it doesn't even have to have a seat. I'm going to put a container on that. And I think I'm going to root trees. We'll see. You'll see when, in two weeks what I decide to do. I moved my celery compost in place container here. As you can see, I can throw all my kitchen scraps in here. There's holes on the bottom. Keep my celery on top. That's doing beautiful. Water the celery. It waters all the breaking down compost. Nothing can get in it. And it's feeding more dinosaur kale. It's feeding everything in here. And the reason I moved it, let's walk over here. Oh, I see a potato plant coming up. That's coming up from compost in there. See the little potato? My beets are getting very leafy, but they're not really growing a root. And that's because it was being fed too much. And so I wanted to have less food for the beets so they grow a good root, which would of course be the beets. And so I'm not going to compost with beets. You don't want to compost with carrots or radishes, anything rootstock like that. You really don't want to compost. So it was too much. And so I moved my compost in place container there. They're movable. I can move it anywhere I want. What else is going on? The zucchini in the front yard, that's pretty much toast. I'll be grabbing that soon, throwing it in there, composting. And in the spring, I'll put another plant in there. Probably another zucchini. It did really well. And then, of course, my red vein sorrel is doing really good. And look, there's another baby. See, there's seeds all over because this year, the red vein sorrel went to seed. And so I'm finding baby red vein sorrel growing in different places. Isn't that cool? This fig tree is supposed to be going to my daughter. I rooted that. That's why I want to root some trees that I want. And it's doing really good, and we're going to move that one, hopefully pretty soon. And then I'll, I, mean, I might leave my peppermint. That's peppermint growing in there. What's over here? Let's walk over here. Okay, I can already see this is going to get too big. Gary's going to move that tree. Uh, onions here are doing good. Chamomile doing good. This is potatoes. I really should do a little harvest on this. I threw a potato or some old potatoes from the house in there, and I think there's potatoes growing in here. So we'll see, I should get this. Well, you know what, I'll dump it out and we'll see what I ended up with. But this, it's dying back. So there might be some potatoes in there. Okay, so that's the front yard. Like I said, I'm basically just prepping for spring. I haven't really been planting, except I did plant the broccolini. And we'll see what happens with that on the tub. So we're done with the front yard. I've been wanting to take down this tool and start over, but the tool that I put up almost a year ago is so good. And the shade cloth I put on only because it was so sunny in the summer, I can unclip that and take that off. So we'll see. I think I'm just going to freshen it up, go through some of the bricks that some of the plants died back in and plant some more things. And I guess I will leave the tool. The tool did not break down. It is as good as the day I put it up. If you've got a problem with critters, it works with rats, it works with squirrels, it works with rabbits. It'll work with birds too. But I had the top open, see. Because again, I've talked about it, when they touch that, they think it's a trap because they have tiny little nails and their nails will get caught in it and they jump back and then they run away. They don't want to be near it. They think, oh, 
there's a trap. I don't want to be near it. So it works great. I have saved so many plants that I want to save. And that's what I want to talk about today. What I want to save. Chair is doing really good. The only issue is, even though the tomato plant is still growing a lot of tomatoes, the midnight snack, it's not getting, I think, enough sunlight. So it's really struggling. But the greens in there are doing fantastic. Even the stevia is still alive. Most of my stevia died back. So stevia is doing really good. So the only thing you really have to think about, or I have to think about, is placement. You know, and I tried it. Now, like I said, we still get tomatoes. Look at all the tomatoes. But I know it really does, it's struggling. It really does need a whole lot more sun. But I'm not complaining. I'm just thinking that more sun would have been better and we're not going to have sun tomorrow. It's going to rain. So it's because, see, up here, the sun moves over real quick and it only gets a, just that little bit of sun. So what is that? Like two hours of sun? You know, and then once it drops behind the house, and that's only now, it changes in the summer. But once it drops behind the house, this poor tomato plant's only getting about two hours of direct sunlight. So tomatoes do need a little bit more. And when you get the proper sunlight for your tomatoes, that's what you end up with. And you probably saw that on the last garden tour. It was sitting over there by the fence where I walk in my garden. And I just picked this. It smells Mm, I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. So I'm going to do something with that probably tonight. I'm thinking just hamburgers. Oh, big slice of tomatoes and I got this great bread I make now, gluten-free. It should be really good. This is stevia. Um, it's the tops. I sprinkle a lot. There's seeds in here and I don't know how many seeds are actually left because the birds do attack it. So I was going to throw it out and I've sprinkled it around and I'm going to have enough stevia, but Gary said he'll take that. He can throw that in his garden and whatever stevia grows, grows. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. A squash. This isn't that beautiful. It's a hybrid squash. I planted the seeds off my pure heirloom zucchini and I ended up with, you saw, all those different squash. I'm going to do a video on this because this was grown without any native soil. No soil. We'll talk about that another time. Okay, let's turn around here. I am still getting tomatoes. And this one got a little damaged because see, it broke up here. It's still growing. This one got damaged because we've had a lot of odd weather, wind and stuff. But see, it's still full of tomatoes down there. So we're still getting tomatoes in here. Probably we'll take the tool off at some point. Clean this up. And this plant now is over two years old. So we'll see what I'm going to do with this plant. And this is a free hanging squash. I just don't know what to do with it yet. I have so much squash, so I left it. It's free hanging. Look, it's not on anything, but it looks nice. And it, you know what? This is very interesting. And I have found this out with lemons and citrus that fall off of trees. You'll find a lot of citrus around the bottom as they fall or on the tree, and they're fine. The moment you pick them up and bring them in the house, within a few days they mold. This will not break down outside in the elements. I, I don't know why, I can't even explain it. It's probably mother nature and it will hang there until I go to cook it or when spring comes and it knows it's time to grow. And at that point it will break down. So storing it outside, I have found works. I can't explain it. Again, that's all mother nature. It works. I don't need it right now, but if I go to bake a squash, I will grab that squash and I will use it. Like I said, I'm loaded with squash. Here is my ginger, turmeric, and stevia table that I am in the process of tearing apart. There is no more black turmeric in here. If you want to see it, go watch the video. The ginger from the store, store-bought ginger, that was not irradiated but had growth inhibitor. I got the video on that. And look at this. This surprised me. I have already got stevia growing back from the base and possibly seeds, which I was surprised about. So I'm gonna clean this table up and hopefully in two weeks this will look different. And I have, haven't gotten all the turmeric out, so I need to get more of the turmeric. And that is the purple tree colored I bought. And you know, online, I bought that one on eBay and I've gotta get that planted too. So that's it for here. Don't have to really stay on this, but see even here, the stevia, is starting to come back. So I hope that means that Mother Nature's telling me we're going to have a warm spring, unlike last year that we were in 30 degrees. So we'll see. Okay, now we are in the main garden. And as you can see, I have been chopping and dropping right now here, my tomatoes, which are still growing. See all the tomatoes? 
I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with this plant if I'll keep it in the spring. No hurry. But as you can see, this is the way I do it. I have a lot of large pots in there. And I plant in the pots and I compost kitchen scraps and everything all around it in this. It works fantastic. So most of the pots are empty except for this one. I guess there's two tomato plants in here and they're just so massive. So we'll see and when spring comes, I really would like to do cucumber and maybe some zucchini in here, but we'll see. I'm not sure. And then again here, I'm just working. This is kind of like where I'm, you know, nothing gets thrown in the trash. So I am throwing all my brown matter in there, leaves I'm trimming, everything gets put in here or somewhere else. <gasps> Look at that. And everywhere I lift a bucket, whether it's in a container and they found their way in, I did not see that. Isn't that beautiful? Let's put this back. We don't want to disturb them. So whether it's a container or on the ground, you know, um, I am keeping all that because all the leaves in my garden, it, to me, that's money. That, and not only is it money, I would be buying potting soil and all that. The thing is, I don't have to go buy all that because the leaves in my garden and branches in my garden are breaking down and they're making the best soil as Mother Nature intended. Let's swing around for a minute. Nothing new, a little cleaned up, still growing tomatoes. That's one thing we did not run out of. This year, so far we're in winter, I have not run out of tomatoes. Of course, I have not run out of green onions and you know, the walking onions, and I have not run out of any greens. We're growing a lot of greens. So that is all doing really, really well. And even squash, we still have squash growing. And that is to my surprise, because last year we did not, again, it was so cold. Lemon verbena has died back and kind of not much going on back here. I don't know how much you can see, but I've got garlic chives and I've got a bunch of pots like this set up. These are like just cuttings off the dinosaur kale and I can move them later. I've got my mushroom plant in there. I've got celery coming up from seed. I've got some more dinosaur kale in there. So there's things that could be moved when I get organized and I want to make it look a little prettier. I want to be able to sit out here and really enjoy myself. What has happened this past year is our gardens, with all the water, the food, the plants, whether natural food, which would be my, in my garden, or the bird seed I put out, has brought in thousands of birds. I didn't even realize how many birds it has brought in. So I made a whole video on 50 birds, not counting bird of prey and other types of birds like that. I just wanted to show the regular beautiful birds that come in, the different types of sparrows and warblers and all that, the scrub jays, just birds I had never even seen before in my life that are coming in the garden now. Birds that are black, that look like cardinals, but they're black, they're gorgeous. I can't believe how many birds now come and as I sit out here, well, it's a little bit of a mess, but I sit on a chair and sit out here at my camera and many times I don't have my camera and I miss out on a bird. I just can't believe they come in here all day. So they're feeding in the garden, and that I want to talk about in a minute too. And then they're coming in to bathe, and they're coming in to feed off the seed and in the garden. So let's go back to here. Dinosaur kale. And again, I've got more red vein sorrel everywhere. What, two years ago I had only one little plant. Now I've got it everywhere because you can multiply. Let me step back here. You can take red vein sorrel and you can multiply it by breaking it apart. It grows like tubers you know it just kind of grows from the bottom and break off a piece and plant it but this year for the first time I should say 2019 it went to seed so now I've got babies coming up that way so I sure don't have to buy any more of that isn't that beautiful this was one I broke off and planted this is dinosaur kale all these are cuttings all cuttings cuttings off my main plant that's still back there I've got one left that's what five years old now and look at it it's trying to make a comeback a few of the others have actually died away. I had four here, I believe, and they have died away. But I still have one large one, but a lot of these are cuttings. Actually, there is one more left in this blue tub down there that's about, I believe it's also four or five years old. Okay, so what else is here? Dragon fruit, really don't like that in my garden. I get stuck by that, so I have to be careful. I've had Gary cut some of it away and take it away. Even though I love it, it needs a better place. And then this is the purple sprouting broccoli. It kind of fell. Don't do what I did. I didn't take care of it. I planted it there. I'm going to compost in here. I'm going to leave it. And it, of course it grew double. 
and it left the pot. It's growing in my container here. That's probably about four years old now. And it's so big. And I'm going to trim all the old brush off the top that was the seed heads and let it come back. But it's just too much. Now you can take cuttings off of that and you can grow it you know by cutting so you can cut it put it in some soil don't have to baby it or anything and it will take off and grow so it's kind of just gone everywhere so every place you see all the greenery this is the purple sprouting broccoli because it fell on the ground back there and then even though it's not hitting the ground so it hasn't set root it fell on a pot back there i got to get it in here and clean this up so i can maintain my garden it's sending up multiple trunks into the air and it's all over this is what I wanted to talk about. I am a very unconventional gardener. Here comes all the thumbs down. Look at all the insects. It's winter. A lot of plants are struggling. When they struggle, they get a lot of insects. Now, technically, I could do a couple things. I do not spray. Gary and I do not use any herbicides, pesticides, nothing. I could easily wash that off with a little bit of just soap and water. I could even just hit it with a hose. All those little insects, take them off that way. See, there's more there on the leaf. I could just wash them off. And though I'm cleaning my garden, I prefer to leave them. Because all day, I have the little bush tits. I've got the warblers coming in, and that is what they live on. So if I take those insects off, and I, let's say I did it throughout the whole garden. They wouldn't come in anymore and they would go find someplace else. And here it's their little paradise. They come in, they take a bath, they drink, and they eat. It's not bothering me. We have so many greens that if I washed them all, I would just have more than I need. So let them come in, let them eat. This is the way I wanna do my garden. I wanna welcome nature in. If I decided I didn't want nature on, let's say, something, I could easily hose it off, wash off the insects, and then tool it. There will be no insects on it because the tool, the fine tool, will keep them off. I've done it. I don't use bird netting because that is very, very dangerous. The bird netting, they get their legs stuck in it, so you can use tool. I wish you could see it, but the tree is loaded with birds. I got warblers in there, goldfinches. Those are the ones singing and all kinds of birds and sparrows and different things around. We have so many birds, it's unreal. So basically I want to walk through and show you what's going on in the garden because I'm literally cleaning. I'm making ways so I can walk around. I wanna to get to all those black pots back there that I put there, which I couldn't get to this past year because everything overgrew. And I wanna get things growing in there. I wanna get more tree colored growing. That is a fabulous, fabulous plant to grow. You know what, let me back up. Hold on, I'm gonna swing you around. This is Kitty's garden, I call it Kitty's garden. The lettuce is going to seed, which is fantastic. I'm gonna collect the seed. And then all her greens are growing, and I think that's dinosaur kale, but it could be broccoli. I've got some broccoli in there. And I don't even have to water the bottom because when I water the top, it goes out and it waters the bottom plant. I've just got some geraniums in there and a little piece of collard in there, but it's doing good. So I'm quite happy with that. Yes, I'm cleaning. See, I want to clean this all up and collect everything I possibly can out of the garden. And let me see if you can see. And then what you do, step on it. Whoops. Step on it, break it down, put some wood chips, potting soil, anything you want to use. And you can plant in the spring. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I fill them up about halfway and then I move them to where I want those containers. So nothing new is really being planted. I, again, look at the broccoli. We've been eating it, and some of them do have some insects on it, and I don't worry about it. Literally, like I said, hundreds of little birds come in during the day, and they're all over that, and they know it's here. So if I started washing it all off, you know, then they won't have any food here, and they will have to go somewhere else. If they have an, a good abundance of food, then this spring they're gonna start getting ready for their babies and I've already seen the hummingbirds unbelievably setting up and getting ready to have a nest which is so early for January but they're already gathering up building material for that and that's just been amazing so I'm very happy with the sprouting broccoli and I want to get more going on the sprouting broccoli because that's one of my favorites let's see over here the pepinos here you know they're skimpy it's cold Look at this, a rabbit got in and climbed up here. Can you believe that? Just 
push that into the plants is what I got to do. Um, the pepinos and a lot of plants are not doing that good because it's been cold. Like I said, this morning I got up after the sun was up and it was still 41 degrees. So it has been cold. And though some plants will do really, really well, some don't. You know, tomatoes are struggling, things are struggling. But, you know, all in all, I think considering we've been so cold at night in the upper 30s, I think it's doing pretty good. So we, let's put it this way. I have no shortage of food. All the water fountains are going. That's what I should have showed you. Even though it's kind of hazy and cloudy, it's like I said, we've got a rainstorm coming in tomorrow, but it's still been a little bit cloudy. You can see the sky is kind of white. Uh, my solar pumps are still working. There's one I've made. There's one down here working. This one here is electric. That one, it's so funny. I did a video on making that, which is nothing more than a solar pump kit for what? 10 bucks and 15 at the most. And it just sits there with the rocks. And that is a favorite of the warblers, the bush tits and the wren tits. It's so cute. I shouldn't say that because I also see white cap sparrows or white crown sparrows, I should say in there and songbirds. So a lot of birds like that one. See, even my bucket one is running. And these were running, but they slowed down. Oh, they're probably in the shade over here. That's electric. So I have two electric ones and the rest are all solar. You see anything running in my garden? It's solar. There's the curry plant. I have yet to use that, but I am using more and more herbs now as I cook. I grew up with, I don't want to use the word bland food, but a lot of my food my mom used to make was salt and pepper and paprika. So when it came to different types of herbs, I wasn't used to it. Now I've been, geez, using sage and rosemary that I grow and thyme and basil, red and green. I mint, I'm using so many more things in my cooking and I found out I really do like it. Let's see what's growing in there. See, there's the red vein sorrel, it went to seed here too. And there are all the babies. That's collard growing there. And again, this, nothing's been done. All I'm doing right now is trying to clean, take off the old seed heads, compost this, because this is all gonna be soil. I just wanna make sure that they've got all the seeds that were in there. Once all the seeds are gone, it's not good for anything. They're not gonna build a nest out of this really. And there's nothing else for them to do with it. So it's gonna go back to the garden. Look at this, the tree collard. I've got uh, four, I think, back here. One, two, Three, you know, maybe it's three. I can't remember. I, ha I was going to have four. I think I gave Gary one, but there's one there. So that's a tree colored. We're going to have a lot more tree colored. And Gary loves it. You know, I just take those leaves, pop them off, wash them, dip them in a little bit of salt water if you want. That's what I do sometimes. And throw them in the oven, the lowest setting, and for a couple hours, and they're crispy. And you pick it up. I leave the stems on, the big, thick stems. See, let's see if we can walk over here. It's like a handle. But I leave the stem on and Gary just sits there and just eats it. Whatever falls on the ground, it's so funny. The dogs run and eat, eat it. They love it and it's just so easy. And then of course you use it for everything else you wanna cook you know, with greens, including our green drinks and stir fry. So that, like I said, there's really not a whole lot new. The eggplant is making a comeback. I had eggplant the other day on pizza. It's still growing and we've been picking eggplant. Again, another solar fountain that's kind of burping, as you can see, because the sun is kind of in and out through the clouds. But even on cloudy days, they work pretty good. The spearmint, which is interesting, which is here, never died back. Last winter, it died back. So I'm not sure why it did not. I am going to cut a lot down as I start to work in my garden. I don't need that much. And plus, we're in an area where we do and can have rattlesnakes. So I don't want to be making a video on my time in the hospital after I got, you know, attacked by a rattlesnake <laughs> or bitten by a rattlesnake. No, I've never have. Um, so that's why I don't want to. And I want to make it where I can see where I'm going. I have not seen a rattlesnake in my garden. But that is not to say they could not or would not come here. So for safety reasons, I will cut back all this here to the ground and let some of it grow where I do not walk. Then here, I'm thinking I may move that, I may not. This one's broke, but this is not broke because it's plastic, even though it is plastic. It broke because I allowed a collard to grow. I don't know if you'll see it in, if you go and look back in the old ones. A collard tree, it wasn't a collard tree, but it grew like a collard tree. It got really big and it started to lean. 
and as it leaned over it was cracking that and I should have cut it down I didn't it got about four or five feet tall and by then it had really made a number on this so I'm not going to throw it out it's still fine I may move it or I might just ignore it I can always tie a rope around it so it won't go anywhere but it's right now nothing is pushing on it so it's fine but if I would have not allowed the color tree to grow so close to it or the collared it wouldn't have done that at all because the other ones are doing quite well lemon balm this is the one I bought at the grocery store and look it's getting new growth now I hope that means spring's going to be warm Look at that, all that new growth. And it's still in the original pot that I bought it in. And I'm gonna freshen up these, both of them. All, you know, both of those. And then let's move over here and clean all this up. Maybe I'll get some more lemon balm up there since it did so well. Got regular sage, which I have been using here. This is my only green sage that I'm growing. Bought that about three years ago. It's still going good. In here, I've got chocolate mint and that's the strawberry in the corner. I don't make tea out of it, but it sure does smell good. Let's see what else is going on. My dazzling blue kale looks a little skimpy. I should really trim the whole thing up and even take some cuttings and get that going again really good. I still have all my regular colored growing in there uh, underneath the tree collard. I show that off and on. See, what happened here is I can't really get back here. I'm starting to clear this up. But if I can't get somewhere, and like I planted once a whole bunch of zucchini, I only went back there to found the skeleton remains the next year, and I lost all that. So when you grow something, you want to be able to get to it. So don't do as I do. Do as I say. That, you'll, you'll be happier. But I've got some lemon verbena, and that is straight in the ground. That is not in a container, and you can see that growing up. That's lemon verbena growing there. But I do want to make it where I can get back there. I'm just not sure how to do that yet, but I'll figure it out as I go. Again, solar. Oh, the birds love taking a bath on top of that. That's just so cute. More eggplant. Purple kale. Look how big this is. This is tree collard. This is an actual tree collard. It is planted in the pot. And this thing, it's falling over everywhere. The trunk on it is massive. You don't do this. You really, I shouldn't have done it. It's just so big. I don't want to put the camera up because the sun is right behind it. But see, all these, you can take cuttings from these, and all these, all of these, could be separate plants. The problem is, we bought a whole bunch of purple tree collards we want to plant. So I'm not looking. See, even the broken ones, they're broke, but they're hanging on by a thread. They're still alive. They don't need much. They're still alive. But look at this. We had some major windstorms. And they're still alive and going strong. They leaned on the fence and they're still growing. But I don't need any more tree colored right now. So I haven't done anything. Like I said, Gary bought a whole bunch of purple tree colored. And we're trying to figure out where we're going to plant it all. But I'm really glad we bought it. Because they are so hard to get. Another container down here that I planted in one year. There's a video on it. Beautiful kale growing in there and everything. And I couldn't get to it last year. So I did go through... And this is my crazy collar that the rabbits hide under. Started to clean it up. Remember, no leaves get thrown out. So, I mean, it can fall to the ground. That's fine. It'll just compost right there and feed the plant. But I couldn't get back here. So I have trimmed out anything I think I don't need. And I want to be able to get that going, clean that up, and use it. Even this. I didn't grow strawberries or anything in this, which I think I'm going to change anyways. Oh, there's a good cement pad, so I will change something up there. Oh, there's something else growing in there, another type of kale. Um, because I couldn't get back here. Basically, the plants pushed me out. Can you hear all the birds? I take a walk here on the, you know, on the property. I go behind it, and I never realize how noisy my garden is. It's just noisy with birds. They're just singing away. This goes on all day, from morning till night. So anyways, that is the collar. This is just regular collard. I bought it. I actually bought a container with four little plants in it at the 99 cent store one day. So that's four plants for a dollar. Planted one here and planted them around the yard and then most of them are still alive. It's amazing. Okay, composting in this container. And this is feeding these papayas because there's holes in there. And of course, this is left, see? 
It has left and set roots deep into the ground, this papaya tree. Again, I did not plant it in here. It came up in my compost, so we left these papaya plants. But now I've been composting in here and throwing things in here. And then all the compost tea goes into the soil and they all send their roots under there and they'll feed. They're heavy feeders. Let me see if I can show you and go up because we've got sun coming through the clouds. Isn't that beautiful? I would never believe we get so many papayas all year. All year, winter, spring, summer, fall, all year we get papayas. So uh, we were gonna trim some of these out and then we were afraid to because it might upset the plant next to it, but we decided not to and it's, they're doing their thing. Even that one is growing fruit now that didn't grow fruit the following year, last year, because this one was the dominant plant and was pulling everything. We figured we'll just leave it because this one protects it from the canyon and shades it, but now it's growing fruit too. So that's doing real good. Let me see over here. I never did anything last year. Everything is just stuff that was in there. I've got celery growing. I'll prep this and get something going in here. The problem back here and the reason I didn't do a lot last year is because the moringa tree fills up with leaves and, and then between the moringa tree and the papaya and the sun moving over the house, it's very shaded here. So I have to think about, again, you have to think about location, what I can grow here. So Swiss chard seems to grow good. The mint grew good. There's chocolate mint back there. So I'll think about what I want to put here. And if there isn't anything, I could always move those tubs. They're perfectly good tubs. Let's take a peek in Gary's room real quick. Oh, don't look at me. I'm in triple layers of clothes from, from the cool because it was like 40 degrees a little while ago. He did move the aquarium. <laughs> he told me this morning, I saw him marching off. Oh, it's 65 in here. I said to him, um, what are you doing? He said, I'm moving my aquarium. I don't know. Let him explain it when he comes in here and does his thing. That's the vanilla orchid we bought a long time ago. So we'll see if it ever does anything. And everything else is doing okay. We haven't really done anything. Look at my moringa. Never died back. Isn't that beautiful? I have actually grabbed some leaves off of that when I wanted some. And the peppers in here are doing really good. And that's something I really want to grow is more peppers. That's doing really good. And the tomato plant stayed alive and he's amazed that the watermelon plant, though it's not going to grow watermelon, is still alive. So I don't know. Let him do his thing. Seems like I had all these plans in here, but I don't have a lot of time. But this is really, really nice. So there's his room. Nothing new. I'll let him do something on this because he's got plans. So there must be something else going there because he's been busy running around here planning to do something with that. So I don't know. <laughs> so that's it for this yard. Uh, if you've got a dog crate and you're feeding birds and you have problems with hawks, do that. You can either leave the door open or not and let the birds come in that way. The hawks can't get in there. I'll do a whole video and explain why that could be really, really good. So there's the garden. And all in all, that's one thing I am not lacking is food. We have more than enough food. And that's what's really good, and I'm happy with that. Look at the tomatoes. Still have tomatoes, and look back here. Oh, I had a red one, I picked them. Oh, there's, oh, another one fell down down there. I gotta get that one. That one already fell off, and then I've got more here. Again, keep in mind, they're not getting that much sun. They need a little more sun and warmth, but all in all, I'm quite happy with it. It's doing really good, and this moringa tree is still alive. Oh, look at that, it's still green there probably because it's up against the house. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's go through the gates. And I think I already made this longer than I wanted. Rosemary, I never talk about it. I know a lot of times I skip over it. Again, it was a 99 cent store buy and 
they're years old and they're doing really good. And I now use a lot of rosemary when I make my pizza dough. And I'll peek back here. We are still working on trying to get all those tangerines or whatever they are off. That tree is so heavy. I can't believe we've picked like a hundred or two off and there's still more and more. They're actually mandarins, Gary told me. They peel beautiful. And I've got a very lazy way of taking care of them, making juice, just peeling them, throwing them in the blender. Sometimes I leave some with peel on because the peel is fantastic. Blend it up with a little water, strain it, and there, you got orange juice. I don't have to put it through a juicer. I don't have to put it, just squeeze it by hand or anything. Look at this. And that's what I say. I cannot believe that we get so many papayas and then it sent this offshoot. And there's the offshoot and look how big those papayas are on the offshoot. Isn't that amazing? It's one thing we have not had a lack of is papayas. Look at that one. Big tomato down here. Oh, two of them. I didn't even realize there's two doing their thing in this cold weather. And then of course, I've got the rosemary here went to flower. Probably it's getting a little more sunlight so this one is flowering, those beautiful purple flowers. I hear a woodpecker. And then more papayas. Some are starting to turn yellow. More flowers on the top. Those again, I don't have to go over all of them. They came up in my compost in place. I do not turn. I don't bother with that. And then I ended up moving them out here. I left them just like that. And they left the pots. And they're growing papayas. We've got more. We've got one on this one. This one gets a lot of cold air through the canyon. So during the winter, it doesn't throw as many, even though I see new flowers. Oh, new flowers. I am so hoping that means we're going to have a warm spring, that maybe we're almost over the cold weather. And then I compost every papaya tree or plant, because I know they're not really a tree. Everyone gets a container where I throw kitchen scraps, leaves and everything. So the compost tea, will go down into the ground and it feeds these trees and they're heavy feeders. You can do that to anything, fruit trees or anything you want. All you have to do is put a container, start just composting in there. Don't turn it, don't make a big fuss out of it and it will feed the plants like nature. Things fall, they break down, anything on the top doesn't, anything underneath breaks down but as the tree continues to drop, whatever was on the top ends up underneath anyways. Hear that? That is a woodpecker, and then we've got a hawk above, flying. Actually, that may not be a hawk, that's a turkey vulture. Yep, that's a turkey vulture. Okay, here, I'm cleaning up and getting ready to figure out what I'm gonna do here. The eggplant, I'll leave. The moringa, I will leave. Uh, some of the Swiss chard I might leave, but I think everything else, I'm gonna compost it back, and this, is still amazing to me. I am still getting squash. I have not had a lack of squash this year at all. And these have been my favorite back here. They look like watermelon, but it's some sort of zucchini. Like I said, I only grew this year heirloom zucchini seeds. I grew them from seed, they were heirloom, but any seeds I saved grew something different. They all grew something different, but that's not what I want to talk about. I'm going to have to discuss and show you. There's only about four inches of matter in there and all these, and they're still growing. And I'm still getting, I picked, look at that, look at this. I'm still getting, oh, here's another one. Love these. Look at that. I, uh oh, shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it was already open, so that's okay. It's already closed. These are not growing in any soil. Only soil that was made by nature, and I will explain that another time. And they grew, every single container I put here grew squash. Every single one. That's why I want to get the whole wall done. And it's all been growing on matter from my garden. Fabulous. So when people talk about rooftop gardens, oh, they're so excited they can do a rooftop garden. Of course you can. You don't even have to bring a whole lot of stuff up there. It's just amazing. You can grow so much stuff in so little. And basically, a lot of your vegetable plants, they don't even have a real deep root system. So it's not that important. What's important is the soil towards the top and what they're feeding on. That's another subject. It'll get too long. Truck bed is still the same. 
Nothing has been done with it. It's got the three different Swiss chard. It's got the red, which you can see there. It's bright red. It's got the green. And then it's got, and these are seeds from the different Swiss chard. All this is seeds, so it's just reseeding itself. There's garlic chive seeds back there. That's those little spiky things up there that will tops. See them? That's garlic chive flowers, but pretty much the seeds have fallen. And then these are the ones that are kind of a multicolored. They're red and green. See? Nothing planted. There's planting itself and it's doing its own thing. And I was going to take it apart. And I don't know because nothing bothers it. There's not even any insects in there. So I'm not sure if the birds, I have seen birds here, fly catchers and different birds. So the birds are probably keeping this in check and nothing gets in there. They all look so healthy and beautiful. So I might just leave it the way it is because I do use a lot of Swiss chard. I use it on everything. I use it for juicing. I use it in all our foods. I use it in soups, anything that I can throw some green vegetables in, I use it. So I might just leave it and maybe do other things back here. We'll see. It's my garden, just like your garden, and you can do it the way you want to do it. And here are the apple trees that came up in my compost on my deck. I can't believe how good they're doing. And that's basically it. And there's a loquat that came up in the truck bed. And I moved it thinking I just yanked it out, dug a hole and dropped it in there. And I think it's going to grow. So whether I really want to grow it from seed and not know what kind of fruit it's going to produce, I don't know. I'll see what happens because I want to put some other trees here. But that one came out of the truck bed. So a bird probably dropped it in there because we do have loquats growing way down among all these trees down there. And so it probably ended up in there and it grew. So we'll see. And then, of course, this is some sort of avocado, came with the wood chips, and it came up, and Gary put a cage around it. It's not in a bad spot. You can still park here if you wanted to. It's away from everything else, so we're going to leave it and see what happens. So that's it. I hope I kept it short, because there really is not much. I'm doing cleaning and thinking is what I'm going to do, and I can't wait for spring. I can't wait to see the birds have their babies and bring their babies to the garden. So I hope I've given you some tips, because the whole idea of doing a garden tour the way I do it is to tell you ideas and tips I come up with or things that did not work and maybe giving you ideas and things you can do. So with that, can't think of anything else right now, but I will be back. I've got to go get my turmeric and everything out of the ground and out of the containers, I should say, and before the next rainstorm. So have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.